Legs are raised. They're lined up. They're off. In the group one, Keeneland Phoenix Stakes, a field of five over six furlongs, and well away the favourite Whistle Jacket leads out his own ablaze. Babouche just third from Rudy's Apple, and trading the field at the end of a furlong and a half is Shadow Army. It's Whistle Jacket joined by Arizona Blaze, the length in front of Babouche, fourth is Rudy's Apple, and the back marker of the quintet heading for the halfway stage is Shadow Army. Precious little between Arizona Blaze and Whistle Jacket, upholding a one length advantage over. Babouche in third and then Rudy's Apple and last of all is Shadow Army order pretty much unchanged with two and a half furlongs to go in the Keeneland Phoenix Stakes and it's Whistle Jacket fractional leader from Arizona Blaze now been asked for more on the outside with Babouche trying to gain on the pair Shadow Army gets reminders relegated to be last of the five is Rudy's Apple it's the cold and the fitty who come to the fore and Babouche hits the front from Whistle Jacket gone on by two lengths then to Arizona Blaze deep in the closing stages and it's Babouche in front from Whistle Jacket. Drop towards the finish. It's Babouche by lead to Whistle Jacket as Babouche ups it to another level in the Caneland Phoenix for Colin Kane and Jill Lines. Whistle Jacket second, third Arizona Blaze. She came into it unbeaten and she's still unbeaten. Babouche takes Group 1 glory for Jill Lines, Colin Keane and owners Judd Munts. She's lowered the colours of the favourite Whistle Jacket. And she has done so authoritatively here, Ruby, in a race that seemed to be very truly run. Arizona Blaze mixed it with Whistle Jacket. The favourite burned him off, but Colin Keane was biding his time. In the end, he's actually got there probably plenty soon enough, but the filly well on top. He has. Um, she's he got to the far side of Whistle Jacket again, Gary. His head is a little bit in the air, maybe. She's her head right down on the ground, trying her heart out. Love to see the head on. Does Whistle Jacket duck in behind Babouche here late on, or does Babouche drift out in front of the Whistle Jacket? It's impossible to tell in the angle we're looking at, but you can see Ryan Moore there has to take a pull. It didn't affect the result in any which way, but it might just tell you a bit more about Whistle Jacket. Is he inclined to... He went left at Newmarket. Has he gone right here on the press? but uh, she was really good Babouche she learned plenty from her win here in the Anglesey Stakes and she beat Camille Pissarro obviously Gerlines also has red letter and Lake Victoria did that form a power of good at Newmarket this afternoon but these fillies carry the two row fillies they look exceptional and um, yeah it's Babouche who drifts in front of Whistle Jacket there but it was irrelevant Gary in the grand scheme of things but they did trap they were doing 43 we're nearly 44 miles an hour here at one point Arizona Blaze took on Whistle Jacket Sh uh, Shadow Army again was a bit sluggish from the start and Rudy's Apple was completely outclassed in the world goal, he's going as fast as he can there on the Dylan Brown McMonagall compared to Babouche who's tanking along in a pink cap Whistle Jacket as well but Ryan Moore is, is taking a bit of a grip but there was no hiding place here, this was a solid race Very much so, I don't know whether it was by design or not but Babouche just didn't come away as well as Whistle Jacket and Arizona Blaze, but I'd imagine the race Colin Keane had planned to ride, Ruby, that was no harm, really. No, I'd imagine he's just going to put a target on Ryan Moore's back, follow him for as long as he could and have one go, and when he switched inside him, this filly did quicken up really smartly. Don't think Whistle Jacket is... They've obviously slowed down. All horses slow down at the end of races, but he hasn't given up Whistle Jacket. But Babouche was just too good for him getting the three pound allowance for the Phillies. And look, this is a big step forward from her maiden win in Cork. She progressed to win the Anglesey. She's progressed to win here again this afternoon. And look, Jarrah has two really, really good Phillies in her and Red Letter. And you add in the couple Aiden has, Lake Victoria, the couple from Royal Ascot. The two Royal Phillies do look to be really, really good. Very much so. It seemed like she switched leads a couple of times there after she got to the front, Babouche. Collins kind of just nursed her home, hasn't he, in that last she half does. furlough. But look, it was a concern of mine beforehand, Gary. I'd say both of these, the Colt and the Philly, this is as quick as either of them would want the ground. Uh, Zarinsk is in Babouche's pedigree and Whistle Jacket, look, it was on the slow side when he won at Newmarket. So, um, look, she's entitled to switch leads a little bit and she just has a huge engine. Be interesting to see what Jared does with her, where he goes. Can't imagine herself and Red Letter are going to run in the same race. No, well, he was talking about maybe going softly, softly with Red Letter. We'll get an update on her in due course from the train if we can. This one's in the debutante in the Moyglare, obviously. Do you think six is a good fit for her? Do you see her stretching out? I think she could. I think she could. Um, just to imagine if she 
strengthens and learns to race a little bit more conservatively in the in the first couple of furlongs. But she's a really, really good filly, isn't she? There's no doubt about that. And yeah, I keep repeating myself. I mean, we've seen some really exciting fillies, haven't we? Absolutely. And Babouche, we already knew was one of those, but she's just up to the gear today by landing this one. It is. It's good to see the fillies going to to, to beat the calls because it kind of. You know, you have a guide then, don't you? Mm. She's done it a couple of times now. Did it in the Anglesey Stakes and now at the highest. Babouche wins the Keeneland Phoenix Stakes. Yeah, and um, Gary, thank you very much indeed. O on a day when we've been talking about the strength in the two-year-old Phillies division, particularly at Bally Doyle, um, and ripples in, in the market, maybe for the 1,000 guineas, Lake Victoria and co. That was a statement performance from Babouche and... Um, There'd be questions about the Guineas, and you'd imagine it would have propelled us to the top of the market for the Commonwealth Cup. The world is her oyster. She's won a Group 1 on her third start. She's beaten the highly touted whistle jacket. Mm. I, I mean, I'd rather, looking at the two fillies, who are, um, I'd rather see her, now that the Commonwealth Cup, it used to be all about the Guineas, but the Commonwealth Cup is a Group 1 only a month later. Uh, I thought she looked absolutely fantastic over six furlongs there. I don't really see the point in, um, in the stretch there and taking on all those O'Brien fillies. There's, there's a lot to go between now and then, and, and Joe Lyons has, has targeted to achieve the park stakes at the back end of September at Newmarket Group 1. That, that would be on the agenda. I um, think if, if, 